I'm Robin, and in today's video, we can bring the spirit of Wednesday to life with our crafts. Let's get started in the spooky world of Wednesday. For my first DIY, I grabbed a milk bottle and wiped it clean using a baby wipe. Then, I spread a good amount of Mod Podge all over the bottle and applied black deco art paint. Once that was done, I went on the web and I got a picture of Wednesday from the Netflix series Wednesday. And I went on Canva and I made myself a little decal. I wanted to apply it to the bottle, so I made sure to apply Mod Podge on the bottle and then I put Mod Podge on the decal and just with my fingers, I slowly smoothed it out onto the bottle. Now I did get a couple of bubbles in it, so I applied even more Mod Podge on top, just using a paintbrush. And then I took the side of the paintbrush and I decided to use it as a roller to try and roll out the bubbles. Once I did that, I took some more of the black paint and painted around all of the edges of the decal so that it would blend in well with the bottle. Wednesday has a tie. She wears like a schoolgirl's uniform. And so I added the tie in, but I didn't like how the collar was looking because in the actual show Wednesday, her collar's white. So I decided to give her collar a makeover with white paint. Once that was done, I had this butterfly stickers and I decided to add these little flowers on but they needed to have white in them. So I painted white on the sticky side so that you couldn't see the paint from the outside and it turned out really good and I added three of them. Next, I got these black eucalyptus from Temu and they're really nice quality but they smelled really bad so I do suggest you air them out if you do get them. And here's how it turned out. I think it looks amazing, a beautiful vase for some spooky flowers. And the combination of the Wednesday picture on the vase, the black and white color scheme, and the eucalyptus create a chilling, captivating centerpiece, making it an ideal addition to spooky decor. For my next DIY, I took my glue gun and a silicone mat, and I needed to make a spider web out of hot glue. So I originally drew crisscross straight lines with the glue gun. And I'm just showing you how I did that here. I didn't speed it up because I wanted you to see the intricate process of it. So first you wanna make a cross. And then you wanna make an X. So the X is gonna go in the center of the cross. And once you have that, then you're gonna take another section and draw a line straight through. And another section and a line straight through and so on. Until you get a cross shape with quite a few bunch of X's in it. Now, what I did was I went online and I looked up a, a spider web clip art so I could get an idea of exactly how I wanted the lines to look. After that, I took each small section and drew a rounded line And I just went around the whole 
spider web doing those round lines all the way up until the middle. Now I forgot a line here, so I had to add it in. And I'm just adding the rounded lines as I go. And you want to do this all the way around. It's a really cool process. And it looks really neat once you're done. Let's celebrate Halloween in the summer with the June Oween collaboration hosted by Annie over at Crafting with Indiana Jones. And make sure to check out the playlist and Annie's link in the description box below and bring some Halloween magic to the sunny days of summer. Once I finished making this spider web, I let the glue dry and then I removed it from the silicone mat. And this is how it looked. I wanted to paint all of the little spider webs black, so I just used more of the deco art paint. Not only did I paint the tops black, but I also painted the sides and underneath a little bit just to make sure everything was covered. Then I took some tumbling tower blocks because I had planned to make a frame around my spider web. So originally I put the blocks like that, but then I decided to put them in the middle because I thought it would make it stand up better. So I'm just deciding how I want to have the blocks right now. And I didn't like having one on top there, so I took that away. And I rearranged the blocks and added hot glue just to make a little base. And on top of the base, I added another tumbling tower block so it would be able to hold up the web like so. Then I put my little block upwards and then I painted the whole thing black so it all blend in together. Using some napkins that I got from various places, right now I'm totally obsessed with napkins. I have such a huge collection. Are you obsessed with napkins too? Let me know in the comment section below. I decided to make the massive window shaped like a spider web from the show Wednesday on Netflix. One half of the window is just black and white, which is supposed to represent Wednesday. And the other half of the window is represented by the girl Enid and it's painted in different colors. So I used the napkin for this process. Now as I was pulling off the napkin from the base, a little piece got wrecked on the spider web so I had to fix that. And then I just cut off the excess napkin. Now this is something that you can do with those white part of the napkin that we separate all the time. There's always a second or third piece of napkin to do something with and this is a project for it. Then I took another piece, the opposite side of the napkin, the white part, and I used that as a template for a blue napkin to use as the base for the second side of the spider web window. And then using other napkins, I just cut out little pieces to be the stained glass. And I ended up looking up a picture of the stained glass window so I could see about where the different colors were. And I just used the spider web to kind of 
position each piece where I wanted it. But then I ended up moving the spider web so I could add all the pieces. And I just added them on with hot glue, put a little glue on the back and then put the piece in the spot. But I kept taking the spider web and, you know, just checking to make sure that the right color was in the right spot. Next, I'm going to put in some yellow. And I got these napkins at Dollarama. You got 30 napkins in a bag and I thought it was a really good deal for $1.50. But then I realized that they don't have the white napkin part. So usually when you buy napkins, if you didn't know this, there's sometimes two or three layers. And what you do is you take either a little bit of glue or a little bit of tape and you can actually separate the napkins so that the top part is a lot thinner when you're applying it in maybe a decoupage or you want, you want to use it for some kind of crafting. And then you're left with other white pieces. That you can do something else with but these napkins didn't have those white pieces so at first I was thinking wow 30 napkins for a dollar fifty what a good deal but really is it a good deal what do you think let me know in the comment section below now here is the piece with all of the colored pieces on it and you can see the glue a little bit but that eventually dries and it dries clear then I added more hot glue on the back of the spider web in all of the lines where the webs were. And then I placed my stained glass portion on the back. And here's how it looks. And then I took my scissors and I trimmed off all of the excess napkin. And I added a good amount of hot glue to the base. And then I put my spider web on. I'm just pressing it to make sure that it was secure. I decided to make the base a little bit larger. And so I just added some more of those tumbling tower blocks and then I decided to paint it so it would all look cohesive. Just because the candle that I had planned to use was a larger one and I didn't think it fit well or sat well on the small base. But then I was like, hey, I could use this small candle and it's really cool because it gives different colors. But when I tried it, I didn't really like it because you could only see it like in a small amount. But then I found this other candle that I had that was really brightly lit and I put it behind and I thought it worked out awesome. This spooky candle is like having a little piece of art that also doubles as a candle. So in the TV show Wednesday, there's this really cool character called Thing T Thing. It's basically a detached hand that has a mind of its own. So I decided I wanted to make one myself. So what I did was I looked on the web for a picture of Thing and then using GIMP, I made myself a pattern. I had gotten a bunch of stuff from this Michaels haul a long time ago and inside was these cardboard pieces so I decided to use them as faux wood for my thing hand. And I covered the cardboard with shelf liner and then just using glue stick I put my pattern on top 
of the shelf liner which I placed on top of the cardboard and I made two different thing hands. Now the reason I did that is because I wanted to cut them out with my scroll saw and I wanted to layer them so it would give kind of a 3D effect. Now I did make some pilot holes and here I'm inserting the blade through the pilot hole because I wanted to give some intricate details to the thing hand. If you've seen Thing T Thing before, he's got all of these little sewing marks on his hand like he's been sewn together. And he's got some scratches and some little holes and things. So I decided I wanted to put in those details. And here's what they're gonna look like. Then I decided to give my little thing hand a manicure of sorts using this nail file. I sanded all of the rough edges off. And once I did that, I removed the pattern and also the shelf liner. And that gave me my little thing hand piece. All ready for me to decorate up. But first I took some of these wood slices that I had left over from when I made a bird feeder. I decided that I wanted a layered effect so first I glued down all of the wooden pieces to the smaller thing hand pattern and then I covered it all with full cart chalk paint in French linen and once that was done and dried somewhat I added more hot glue and then I placed the larger pattern on top. I wanted to have like a 3D look. I decided to go over all of the little stitches and holes and things with some of the Waverly Antique Wax. And I also outlined around all of the fingers just to give it more of a, an in-depth look. Now there was a finger missing in the middle of the four fingers. Like I had four fingers, well, three fingers and a thumb, but there was a finger missing in the middle and I really didn't like how it was looking. I thought it looked kind of funny with that space there. So I was thinking about what I could put there to replace it. Now, originally I had made a tiny finger on the end, but I didn't like it. And I'm just trying to add more of the Waverly Wax all around the fingers just to make them pop better. I had this bunny that I got from Dollarama at Easter time and it had this little carrot on it and I thought the carrot might fit perfectly behind the hand where that hole was. So I decided to paint the carrot in the French linen. And once I did that, I added some Waverly on top to make a fingernail and also knuckles on the carrot to make it look more like a finger. And then I decided to add some knuckles to the other part of the hand and give it some wrinkles and different things just to make it look more like a hand and then I added the carrot on with hot glue and I thought it worked out really well
Next, I took this terracotta pot and I painted the whole thing black. Now I didn't want to wait for it to dry. So once the whole thing was painted inside and out, I used my new heat gun on it. Now you want to be really careful when you have a heat gun because it does get very hot and so does the terracotta pot. I had this stencil from Dollar Tree and I decided to cut out the word things from it because I wanted to put the words on the pot and then it could be the hand things pot. So using some masking tape or painters tape I taped on the stencil and I find if you use tape on a stencil it works a lot better than just like holding it there or you know winging it and then I took this brush that I got at Michaels and I really like this brush actually and I dabbed on white paint and then once I let it dry a little bit, I removed it. Now I did have a problem with the H because I had cut it off partially. So I had to do that part separate. And when I removed the stencil, there was a little bit of a bleeding line that I had to take black paint and just go over. But it was really easy to fix. And now it says things and I'm going to add the hand on top. But first I tore up some paper to make like a shred. And then I had these candies that I got at Dollarama that were a pumpkin, a skull, different Halloween shapes. And then I took hot glue and I attached it to the carrot finger of the thing hand which worked out great because it was back a bit further so it fit on very well onto the little pot. Then I just took out the purple skull because I was going more for a black and white theme but I really wanted the pumpkin in there for the orange so I replaced it with a white skull. And here's how it turned out. I really love it. This craft not only showcases your creativity, but it's a great way to embrace the spirit of the holiday while satisfying your sweet tooth. <laughs> These crafts really let me show my love for the Wednesday show and bring its cool aesthetic into my home. They're a unique and personal touch to my Halloween decor. If you're a fan like me, I totally recommend giving these crafts a try. For more ways to decorate glass bottles and jars, click on the next video.